This is usually draft scouting season for us at Elite Prospects, and we're also in the middle of writing our draft guide. But I was not going to miss Lane Hudson's first two NHL games. He's one of the most fun players to watch in hockey, and I was also curious to see how he would perform against NHLers. These end-of-season games are usually not the best time to evaluate and project prospects, but the Red Wings needed to win. They tried to play their best. Hudson really faced top NHL competition in these games, and he delivered. He showed every element that makes him such an exciting prospect. In this video, we're going to break down his most interesting shifts, and we're really going to dive into the details of his play, what his strengths were and what he should work on to become a productive NHLer maybe as soon as next season. We have to open this video with Lane Hudson's first point. It's a really good play from him. Away from Gallagher, came back to the point though for Savard. Just held in at the line as the Canadian rookie in his first National Hockey League game threw it in front of him. He prepares this play very well. He moves away and back. He creates some space for his next play and stretches the defense to make it work better. Before he even touches the puck, he starts accelerating in the direction that he came from. He makes this typical fake move. The defender turns his feet for a second, and he gets by to shoot on that. What's good about this sequence is that, for the most part, the Habs picked up on what Hudson was trying to do. Savard's screen barely did anything here, but it's good that he saw the move coming and tried to help, and the two-man net front presence led to the goal. The Red Wings dump the puck in here. Hudson gives an option on the breakout. He skates behind his teammate, gets the puck, and fakes the forechecker by looking off his target. His pass enables his team to get on the attack. Alex Newhook who has it. Newhook circling the goal. The Wings get the puck back. Hudson has a good gap with the first attacker, but the puck gets to the second one. He adjusts and forces a dump in. And this is an important situation now. Hudson is a smaller defenseman. Is he going to let up or go first to retrieve and protect the puck? He goes without hesitation. He establishes body positioning, spins off the attacker, and makes the first short pass. Now Hudson has to defend in a system that he doesn't really know that well. To start, he just has to stay close to his net front coverage and cut passing lanes. He does it very well. His man climbs up, he follows. That's okay in the half system. Defenders can follow their man to the top when the play moves there, but there's a bit of confusion after. There's four attackers at the top and one coming down. It's not exactly Hudson's man, Gallagher can replace Hudson here and pick up the attacker, but defending the slot is still mostly a defenseman's role. Hudson should probably have moved down earlier. He's puck watching a bit and late to help after. Such a confusion is normal for a new player coming in without much practice. Hudson is known for his offensive zone moves, but I think what he will do best in the NHL is anticipate and manage space. He sees plays and empty spots that he can fill before others. Sava gets the puck here. He evades the forechecker, makes the pass, and Hudson is gone. He picks up as much speed as he can and tries to create a tap-in play. I'm not sure many other Habs defensemen would have tried that play. Hudson saw that the rush didn't have an F1, and so he decided that he was going to play that role. He backchecks and gets ahead of his man on defense. He boxes him out. He picks him up early and pushes him out. The puck moves behind the net. Hudson follows again. Now there's three high, and you see Hudson play more conservatively here. He stays between his man and the net at a good distance from him and that enables him to adapt to the play. He then creates the exit with a middle pass under pressure. That draw won by Evans. That for Hudson across, oh nicely set up for Evans. That was he so wide open. That's a nice setup from Hudson off the faceoff. He gets the puck and sees his teammate get open at the faceoff circle with the help of a big boy. He fakes a D2D pass. That's also a nice sell job from Savard here. Because of the team's deception, the play turns into a great scoring chance. This comes back to what I was saying in the first clip. Look how quickly he anticipates the game. One teammate is moving up, instantly Hudson moves down. You can't really expect Josh Anderson to make the cross-ice pass, but players will learn to look for Hudson moving down, and some of them will be able to make that pass. Offense is about risk, but good offensive rotations also lead to good defense sometimes. Because Hudson is up in the play here, he's in a better position to stop the Red Wings breakout entirely. Played by Fabry, he'll race back here. I mean, Hudson pretty quick. He's an elite skater. Big I don't think Hudson is an elite skater. I understand why everyone is going to say this about him. He's hyperactive, very shifty, and he has a high stride rhythm. Overall, I think his skating, and especially his speed, is good for the NHL. More than good enough. But what makes him effective as a mover are mostly his habits. 
is use of deception on the offense, and defensively, his ability to establish body positioning. Hudson can't lose this race because he moves in front of the opponent. He seals the puck and prevents the opponent from grabbing it. Defensively, Hudson doesn't cover that much ice, but he reads puck carriers well. He cuts the pass and then immediately moves across the ice to give a breakout option to Slavkowski. And then he provides the same support to his partner. You see his shiftiness again. He prepares almost every pass with deception. This is his first National Hockey League point dumped down to the left of Lyon, taken by Sider. Less than a minute to go in the opening period. He's slightly off his angle here, and Larkin beats him. But he's stuck on the outside anyway. That's not too dangerous. Hudson then moves in the slot with his coverage, and then to the wall before accelerating up ice as a breakout option. The puck escapes him, he recovers it, but he doesn't have great options, so the next pass fails too. The other team attacks, it's a 3 on 3, and he picks up the right option. He switches and lets Saval have the net driver. The puck moves to the wall, he scans behind him, and cuts the passing lane again. Hudson doesn't really have the natural gifts of larger defensemen. Because of that, he will have to become very good at reading puck carriers and their options like this. This next shift shows some of his limitations. It's easier to push off the puck and not that hard to evade as he can't surround attackers like bigger defensemen. He has to use a lot of short strides to stay with opponents, and the clever ones will make him overshoot and miss. Net front defense might be harder for him too, but in this game so far, he's mostly doing a good job picking attackers early as they drive to the net and walling them off. He will have to do that consistently at the NHL level if he wants to remain an effective defender. The Habs have trouble getting out of the zone in this shift. Hudson faces another one-on-one -on -one net front battle. That's a good early reaction, but the opponent spins around. And because he now has the inside positioning, the opponent is also first on the puck on the back wall. These one-on-one -on -one battle limitations will be a part of Hudson's game. But here he still managed to make a last good play. He finds the puck, knocks it away, and creates the breakout. And here's a really good defensive sequence. Hudson is going to execute a surf pattern here. You can read more about this play in this article. It's one of the coolest ones we've made at EP Ringside. You get to learn about all the defensive details of the game with commentary from Tori Pittner, a draft-eligible defenseman. If you want to know more about hockey, it's worth reading. Hudson sees the attack on one side of the ice here, so he collapses on it. He skates forward at the puck area, takes away his only option with his angle and stick placement, gets ahead, makes contact to prevent an escape, and again, establishes body position. The play was a bit risky because of the two-on-one -on, on his side of the ice, but it was so well-timed and he used such a great angle that he pulled it off perfectly. The Habs loses the puck after, but Hudson positions well and the defensive presence doesn't last long. He creates the breakout. And they're allowing Comper to center one. And one off Kane's foot. Back for Simon Edmondson. That got knocked down by Savard, who then was knocked down. On it is Hudson. Showing that good footwork brings it across. Something to monitor with Hudson is backward skating. The surf patterns in his game are also an adaptation. He chooses to skate forward in situations where others would face opponents or use their backward crossovers. Popsky played it in down low to Caulfield. Back to the line for Lane Hudson. And number two, With his feet pointed toward the back wall, he's vulnerable to plays to the middle. But his ability to read opponents compensates here. He gets his stick on the puck just as Raymond tries to cut inside. And this last overtime shift encapsulates both what makes him great and also what he will have to overcome. He turns the feet of the defender, exploits space, creates confusion in coverage, gets to the middle, and almost ends the game. And then he barely loses the race against Raymond on the back check. I know not everyone is interested in skating mechanics, so if you don't want to hear the breakdown, skip ahead. But it's rare we get such a good side-by-side -side look at two players skating in a straight line. And this clip illustrates Hudson's less efficient mechanics well. Raymond is close to a perfect skater. Great angles and flexion. His knees advance over his toes. He has a lot of flexion, not a lot of noise in his upper body. It's straight, not rounded, and stable. He completes his weight shift on each leg. Hudson doesn't complete his stride as much. He's a bit uneven. His back is rounded and moving up and down slightly. His recovery is a bit wider, and his pushes are more to the back. The differences are small, but compounded, they're enough for Raymond to get ahead here with a bit less visible effort. Hudson will gain more strength, and that will translate to more speed and acceleration. But he would become even more effective in his game with some slight mechanical adjustments in his stride. Hudson's moves will continue to be effective, 
in the NHL. But some of them might not be as effective as in college. Defenders read through deception better in the NHL. In this situation, Hudson doesn't really have anything dangerous to leverage. He's far away for a shot, and the defender doesn't care if he fakes or makes a D2D pass. Before making a move, he's going to have to ask himself if he's really improving the conditions of the play or creating more space. In this situation, he had passing options available and he locked his team in a pressured high cycle. Here's a great sequence from him where he makes the perfect play. Hudson orchestrates the breakout here. He provides an option to his teammate, he gets the puck and lobs it ahead. And then he moves up ice, close to the attack. Again, because he does that, he closes his gap with the opposition. If the puck escapes his team, he's right there to prevent a rush attack or to provide an option. With 14 and they lead the league, the President's Trophy winners. There's a shot. In this situation, he has something dangerous to leverage. It's a two-on-one with an inside driver. He fakes, cuts inside, creates space for Suzuki, and he passes. With this move, he breaks the defense and creates confusion. The wings are scrambling and off their coverage. They take some time to recover, and this leads to plenty of good passes and scoring chances. In this shift, we see a second attempt at a play that will end up becoming the last goal of the game. Hudson gets the puck at the point. He walks the blue line. We see a skating adaptations again. A different defenseman might have caught this puck in movement here and used backward crossovers and 10 and 2s to get to the middle. But Hudson is not Quinn Hughes. He uses a stronger forward skating to create the separation and he's still able to send a shot toward the net, where Slavkowski stands. Vancouver Canucks with 2-10 remaining. But again, everything to the outside, from the perimeter. Quinn Hughes. Well, Hughes chased by Gunther with a shot and a stop there by... Connor Ingram. Look at the movement by Quinn Hughes. My goodness, that's Kale McCarr like right there. The edge work. Just all over it. Rebound, they score! Hudson shows a lot of poise in the next two shifts. He forces the dump in here by moving toward the opponent and then skates down the zone as an option. He looks behind him for outlets, enters a battle, wins the puck back, and he finds the best option. And this is an even better play. The wings attack, the puck is loose on the back wall, he runs behind Sava, attracts two four checkers, and then backends the puck in the middle. Sava also made a nice screen to help him. Hudson has almost everything it takes to become a high-end puck mover in the NHL. As long as he has good options and manages the puck well, he could create a lot of exits for his team. These last two clips don't require that much analysis. He shows everything he can do. The feints, the skating, the passing game, and his ability to find space and lanes. There for Lane Hudson, working on his hero, I know I just said he's not Queen News, but there are some moments. Zuki, who carries up high on Sider. Now Caulfield plays one back. Reimer hit him on and Jerry Slot. Turned by Slapkowski. Blocked by Conker. Back to the line. Savard now for Hudson. The head fake. Devils get a face off win, puck doesn't get out. Quinn Hughes keeps it in. Dancing from the blue line. There's some work ahead for Hudson, and the defensive part of the game will always remain harder for him than most. But if he can learn to work around his limitations, he could open up the team's entire offense. We haven't seen a player like Hudson in a Habs jersey in a while. Just imagine the plays he could create with Suzuki's line over the next few seasons. The team's top players will learn to read Hudson's patterns even better, and when that happens, he will only become more dangerous. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. You can also check out epringside.com for more prospect analysis and the article on modern defensive patterns. We're going to release our draft guide in just a few weeks.